After the outbreak of World War II, people all over the world suffered to varying degrees from the war's devastation. At that time, a 27-year-old Chinese girl studying in Germany was very worried about losing contact with her family in China. Her name was He Zihui. He Zihui's home was in Suzhou. Her family had eight brothers and sisters. Four of them were studying abroad. When mail and communications were interrupted, they lost contact with their family in Shanghai, and everyone at home felt worried about them. During World War II, millions of people lost mail contact with their families and relatives, especially those in countries at war with each other. At that time, an international organization in Geneva tried its utmost to re-establish international communication. The eight children of the He family hailed from a respectable family in Suzhou, China. Their father, He Cheng, had studied at the Japanese Military Academy in his early years. In 1900, when the Eight Nation Alliance invaded Beijing, the Qing government was forced to sign the Boxer Protocol and pay 450 million silver deals of reparation to the coalition countries in exchange for continuing their imperial rule. Waikong到日本留学,参加了这个同盟会,然后和孙中山一起为了在中国实现民主和共和,准备推翻那个清朝,但是在清朝被推翻以后,整个社会并不是像他想象的那么美好。这时候他就是准备就是将自己请其自己家里的这个资产把自己的八个孩子送到这个八个国家去呢进行就是这个学习这些国家的强项我印象的父亲呢我父亲也好母亲也好主要对我们要好好做人对他对我们的教育就希望
那个很信的，所以呢，呃，我母亲他们兄弟姐妹全部学的是自然科学。The Hu children all went to study abroad to fulfill their father's dream. The eldest daughter, Hu Yijian, was only 21 when she went abroad. Her father had given her a sum of money and said, "You can use this money to get married, or you can study abroad. It's up to you." Determined to study abroad, Hu Yijian didn't marry early and have children. Like traditional Chinese women. 大姐先出国的，她是从京南京的那个京女大毕业了以后，教了一到镇江教了一年书。因为我姨妈觉得她年纪太小，应该。In 1931, Hu Yijian boarded a ship to the United States to study. At that time, her younger brothers and sisters were still young. Zhe Ming and Zhe Hui were in high school. Zhe Yun was 12, Zhe Ying 11, Zhe Yuan 9, Zhe Cheng 7, and the youngest brother Zhe Qing was only five. 我妈妈第一次出国是在一九三一年，到了美国以后呢，她不久就正好听到了九一八日本侵略东北三省的这个新闻，当时呢就是对她震动非常大，所以呢她就是救国学成要救国这个理想，从那个时候就开始形成。Hu Yijian obtained a PhD degree after several years of study in the United States. She returned to China and taught a physics course for graduate students at Yanjing University. That's when she met a talented student, Gu Tingsui. Gu Tingsui had graduated from Tsinghua University and was one of the radical patriotic students. Who had participated in the December 9th movement to resist Japan and save the nation? He also took part in developing high explosives at the munitions factory to fight the Japanese invasion. Later, the Southwest Associated University appointed him as a lecturer in physics. 一九四一年七月份，我我我父亲和母亲结婚。九月份，他们就到了美国。这是我母亲第二次到美国。呃，他们九月份到美国，呃，我父亲读书，我母亲工作。当时呢，就是又就是处理了很大的事儿，就是爆发了呃珍珠港事件。随着这个战事发展，然后呢，这个呃，就是。交战国之间的这个通信的往来呢，就就中断了。在这种情况下呢，我妈妈呢还是不断的在这写信，尽管没有回音。这时候通信联络都不通了，三个地方，中国、美国、德国，互相之间不能有正常的通信来往。那么彼此他们又很牵挂。Six months after the outbreak of the Pacific War. When the Huzi Hui in Germany learned that the Red Cross has restored the mail route, she immediately sent a letter to her eldest sister, Hu Yijian, in America. It was written in German and contained only 25 words. The letter read, "Dear sister, how are you and the family? Do you have any news from parents, brothers, and sisters? Can write letters home. I'm fine." Yours, Zhe Hui. Hu Zhe Hui's letter to Hu Yijian was delivered through the ICRC mail system. According to the requirement of the Red Cross, Hu Yijian had to write her reply on the back of the letter. Since she couldn't keep her sister's letter, she copied it on a piece of paper. From this paper, we can see the form of the original letter, including the stamp and postmark on it.
After receiving the letter from He Zuhui, He Yizhen wrote back to her sister at the same evening. Zuhui, no words from parents. Send message in May through Red Cross. Will send again with your message. Doctor Yun Pei, four months. All well. Yours, Yizhen. Meanwhile, He Yizhen had also written a letter to the family in Shanghai. Telling them Zhe Hui's news from Berlin, her letter read, "Zhe Ying, just received five message from Zhe Hui through Red Cross, inquiring about family. How are you all? We all well. Yun Pei healthy. Please answer yours, Yi Zhen." According to the provisions of the Red Cross, this kind of letter had to be written on a special form. The American Red Cross Berkeley chapter in California explained in a letter to He Yizhen the basic requirements of a Red Cross message. This letter is how it is said. It is like this: He is the Red Cross Berkeley. He is a letter to the Red Cross Berkeley chapter in California. He wrote, "If you want to write." 请将内容填至随信附带的表格背面，交给我们。回信要在二十五字之内，可以用外语，但要翻译成英文，服于其后。短信请务必带有正式的个人签名。如想回信，我们很高兴为你提供服务。致敬，行政秘书、家庭服务秘书、美国红十字会。因为这个这封信呢是个公开信，这个他途经的各个政府的话都有权来检查这封信，内容的话呢，仅限于家庭的情况和一些家常的事情啊，而不能够涉及任何呢这个政治上、军事上或者其他的一些信息啊，因为这封信的话呢，在战乱的情况下要经过很多政府的手里，这一点的话呢，我们也可以。Because those messages had to go through censorship, and of course, the longer the text, the more complex the language is, and so on, the smaller the process. So, 25 words limit was a way of ensuring that there would be a regular flow, that people, that messages would not just pile up in the censorship offices. So it is interesting to notice that right from the beginning, people were concerned with this issue of family link. That it was not enough to relieve the physical suffering of wounded soldiers. That was what the Red Cross was created for. This was a huge task because all communication was interrupted between many warring countries. All Red Cross messages had to be sent to the ICRC headquarters in Geneva, and then reposted from there to the different national Red Cross societies. This circuitous transmission route resulted in much longer delivery time of the letters. This is unfortunately one consequence of war that postal relations are interrupted.、Uh, nations at war they don't want to continue normal relationship, and、uh, the, the connections are interrupted. So you could not ship a message direct, let's say from San Francisco to Tokyo. First, there won't be any ship. Uh, sailing from San Francisco to Tokyo or back, so you had to go through a neutral country, and there were very few neutral countries during Second World War. Switzerland was one of them, and was one which succeeded in a way in maintaining communications with 
I would say almost all parts of the world. In Geneva, although the ICRC's central tracing agency had a large space and service system to process these letters, they were still overwhelmed by the sheer number of letters. More than 10,000 letters arrived here every day. The central tracing agency mobilized about 4,000 volunteers, divided into 31 services that were dealing with letters from different countries and regions. In terms of figure, as far as I know, 24 million uh, family, so civilian family messages were forwarded through the services of the International Agency for Prisoners of War here in Geneva. So it may be considered limited figure, taking into consideration the number of persons concerned, but each message had to be sorted out checked, controlled, reached the right person, be delivered often by the National Red Cross Society because in many parts of the world the postal services had broken down with the war, people were recruited to the armed forces and so on. So I believe each of these messages was in a way a miracle. In 我妈妈呢就是首先给家里发了一封信就是这样的这样的一封信就是彭氏社会通信他这个信呢他是用英文写的当时他写的内容呢是这样啊呃外孙女三月三十日生于伯克利一切安好这是我哈呃情随被授予
他们珍惜每一个字，通过每个字来传递他们的感情、亲情。我妈妈和二姨他们之间的那二十五字的信，总是那几句话，就是“家里都好吗？我很好。”这说明呢，他们当时唯一牵挂的呢，就是呃对方的平安，其他呢都不重要了。呃，杜甫有一句诗，叫“烽火连三月，家书抵万金”。只有经历过那种生活的人，像我妈妈和我二姨他们，他们才对这个诗呢有特别深刻的理解。In fact, the Hu family, who live in a foreign concession in Shanghai, did not know that even the right to 25 word letters wasn't easy for them to get. In spite of that. The ICRC still send their delegates to China, under very difficult conditions and restrictions. They visited wounded soldiers in hospitals and did all they could to gain the right for civilians to correspond. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the ICRC and pressure from the international community, the Japanese military was forced to agree, starting from 1942. To the opening of Red Cross mail routes between the three cities of Shanghai, Chongqing, and Hong Kong, but there were no postal routes opened in other parts of China until the end of the war. In February 1942, the ICRC appointed Edward Eggold, a Swiss businessman who had been doing business in China for many years, as his representative in Shanghai. At the same time. Ernest Sen and Rudolf Zindel were also appointed as representatives in Chongqing and Hong Kong, respectively. Mr. Edward Ego came to China in 1911. Before he became the ICRC delegate in Shanghai, he was the manager of Cyber Hegner and Company Shanghai, which was the Shanghai branch of the Swiss company Cyber Hegner, based in Zurich. This company began to trade with China since 1900. Cyber Hegner and Company Shanghai was located in Yuanmingyuan Road, near the Bund. Mr. Echo set up the ICRC office inside the company, with the ICRC logo on his door. The file of Mr. Echo is kept in the ICRC's historical archives in Geneva. Mr. Echo hired 18 Chinese employees in Shanghai. The main mission of the Red Cross office he led 
was to provide relief goods to prisoners of war, to send them clothing and food on behalf of their families, to help civilians exchange family letters, and to look for missing POWs and foreign nationals of enemy countries. Thanks to Mr. Eggles' outstanding work in Shanghai, the Shanghai residents were able to communicate with their relatives and friends overseas. Unfortunately, all the work that Mr. Eggles did in those years has remained largely unknown.我从国际红十字档案中了解到成俘虏的、成战俘的时候，或者是被关押的时候，都受过红十字会这方面的服务。S'occuper des prisonniers de guerre et leur permettre de retrouver leur famille par la correspondance, c'est ça fait sans doute possible, ça fait partie du devoir humanitaire. Et je peux rajouter, puisque vous me demandiez des souvenir personnel que ma grand-mère Juliette Perrault, donc le mari de Maurice, elle a travaillé pendant les deux guerres mondiales, donc 14-18 et 39-45, à l'agence des prisonniers de guerre. Et par ce biais-là, dans le travail de cette agence, euh, moi j'ai gardé des lettres extraordinaires de gens qui la remerciaient pour les interventions qu'elle pouvait faire dans le cadre de son travail à l'agence des prisonniers de guerre et aussi des civils. Hein. Pendant la guerre de 39-45, il y a eu tout un... Tout un ils, ont, ils ont fait une, une agence justement pour rechercher les prisonniers, ça c'est la Croix-Rouge qui a fait cela. Et c'était très utile pour beaucoup de, de, de prisonniers ou de blessés qui se sont trouvés dans des pays inconnus. Quoi. Il y a des exemples très précis où vraiment une voisine, elle a retrouvé sa, sa mère en Allemagne. Elle, avait dû, elle a été prise, placée cette, comme enfant et après la guerre, grâce à la Croix-Rouge, elle a retrouvé sa mère en Allemagne. Oui. Hu Zuhui, after graduating from Tsinghua University, went to study physics at the Berlin University of Technology in Germany.
In Hu Zuhui's second year of study in Germany, the Sino-Japanese War broke out. However, the Chinese had already been certain that this was going to happen. So Zuhui had chosen ballistics as her main area of study, preparing herself to return home and fight against the Japanese. It was unbelievable for a girl to study ballistics. Yet He Zuhui chose this school and ballistics as her major. She ran into a lot of troubles. 何先生后来八十年代跟我讲，他说不仅保密啊，这个学这他我们觉得这个系叫技术物理系，它的建筑是跟别的所有系分开的，中间有一个隔断，不能来往的。他说这里说没有一个非德国的外国学生，更没有说
In my garden, there is plenty of work. Wish you all the best and good health. Yours, Zhe Hui. How are you and the family? I'm fine. Have you got news from home? Have written letter through Red Cross every month for a year, but no reply received today. Yours, Zhe Hui. Dear sister, I haven't heard from you in a long time. How are you? Yesterday I received news from parents. Everyone at home is fine, and so am I. Yours, Zhe Hui. How are you and your family? I'm fine. When we will return home? I will leave immediately if there is possibility. See you soonest. Yours, Zhe Hui. Dear sister, how are you? I'm fine. Yours, Zhe Hui. Dear sister, how are you? Do you have news from parents? Since autumn, I am in Heidelberg. All is excellent. Best regards. Yours, Zhe Hui. He Zhe Hui's last 25-word letter to his sister was written on November 28, 1943, only four days apart from a previous letter to her sister. At this point, she still had not received any reply from her eldest sister. He Zhe Hui could not help but have all kinds of apprehensive forebodings. However, apart from continuing to write letters. She could not think of any other way to contact her sister. In fact, after He Yijin had written two letters, one in May 1942 to her sister in Germany, and one in July 1942 to her family in Shanghai, she no longer communicated through Red Cross messages. Why was that? Uh, the second letter, the second letter, was in May 1942. 发出的。那么自从四三年以后，呃，我二姨就是合作会给我妈的信，十了封信，她一封都没有回。仔细一看时间呢，就是因为呃，我父亲呢，在四三年的时候，他已经就是从伯克利，呃，那个博士毕业了，已经正式参加工作，而这个工作呢是，呃，属于曼哈顿计划。呃，这里绝密的工作，属于呢这个雷达研究这方面的工作，所以呢，在这个时候，啊、呃，我妈妈呢，她也就没有再给我二姨呢合作会回信。In 1943, Ge Tingsui obtained his PhD. The topic of his thesis was research on invincible ultraviolet light sources. That was a military-related research. The gallium lamp that he invented was used during the final stage of the World War II by the U.S. Army to scout the Southeast Asian islands occupied by the Japanese. In January 1944, Ge Tingsui was transferred from the Manhattan Project to the Spectroscopy and Radiation Lab of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This was also a top-secret research team of the U.S. military. Ge Tingsui's greatest contribution was the development of the microwave duplexer, which is a key component of radar. It uses microwave radar transmitter and receiver tubes for automatic frequency control. He also won the patent for this invention. In the radar book series written after the war. 
Gu Dingsui's work was mentioned in many places. Radar was known as the invention that changed the world. A physicist in World War II once said, "It is radar that has won this war." On March 3, 1943, He Ziying wrote a letter to her elder sister in the United States. This letter was written in Chinese and was exactly 25 characters long. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. From late 1942 until the end of the war. He Zihui and her family in Shanghai never received any letter from He Yijian. This made the family very worried about He Yijian, because they could not imagine the reason why she did not write back. This mystery wasn't revealed until after the war. During the war, 呃，原来我妈妈他们和父母啊、兄弟姐妹之间感情是非常深的。呃，他们虽然呢在世界呃各地，但是呢经常和家里保持联系，因为他们互相都非常的惦记啊。尤其是在那个当时兵荒马乱的这样的时期啊。何一珍 recorded the days when each letter was sent and received on the back of an envelope. Definitely,、uh, for us at the Red Cross, the, the basic element uh, or the basic uh,、um, principle that we have is, is that of humanity, and humanity、um, encompasses、uh, humanity in the notion of humanity uh, is um, included not only the physical well-being of people but also the psychological well-being,、uh, and a very central element of. Of the psychological well-being is to know where members of your family are, where your brother is, where your where your parents are,、uh, where、um, members of your family are, and that is really a very very central element to the psychological well-being、um, that、uh, that people have. So we we all also very much、uh, address that issue. And still today. Uh, there are cases that dates back from Second World War that,、uh, together with Red Cross and Red Crescent National Society, we're able to trace family relatives. Or, unfortunately, as time goes by, most of the time is the son, the daughters, or the grandson or the granddaughters that have got information of what happened 60 years back. 就是我妈妈当时在德国，呃的时候呢，曾经有一年半的时间，呃，不能和任何的亲人取得联系。In fact, the eldest sister He Yijian had written a letter from the United States to He Zihui in Germany, but the German government had refused exchange of Red Cross messages. Hence, He Zihui never received this letter. She was missing her family. Wanted her family to know what she was doing. She gradually lost patience and was even thinking of leaving Germany to return to China. But the war was an obstacle to her desire to return home, and isolated her from her family. While He Zihui was utterly lonely and missing her family, she suddenly remembered the news that she had received just before the outbreak of the war. Her classmate Qin Sunqiang from Tsinghua University was working at the Curie Laboratory in Paris, France.
This brought back memories of her old school and the time she spent there. At Tsinghua University, He Zihui and Qian Sunqiang were seen as the perfect match by their friends and peers. However, at university, they were too busy studying. There was no chance for the spark of love to ignite between them. 就是我父母当初在第二次次第二次世界大战中，当时我父亲在法国，我母亲在德国。他们呃，自从三六年呃，我父我母亲去德国以后呢，那个就没有再有联系。千森强 ，the son of a famous sinology professor Qian Xuantong, was an intelligent and diligent student. The Curie Laboratory was one of the most famous nuclear physics labs in the world at that time. After the old Curies passed away, their daughter Irene and her husband Frederick Joliet continued to lead the lab's work. In 1940, Qian Sanqiang completed his doctoral thesis and oral exam and was awarded a French national doctorate degree. Through the recommendation of the couple Juliet Curie, Qian Sanqiang became a researcher at the French National Center for Scientific Research. Uh, 是四三年吧，那个我我母亲就给我父亲发了一个二十五字，当时但是这种通信只有有限制，呃，只能是二十五个字，中文是二十五个字，英文英文呃呃英文法文德文都是二十五个词。啊，在这种情况下，呃，我我母亲第一次给我父亲发了一封信，就是问，呃，他的状况，呃，而且，呃，委托，呃，说和呃北京有没有和国内有没有联系？如果有联系的话呢，呃，希望他能帮助传达信息，表示，呃，他在国外，呃，他在德国，呃，一切平安，类似这样。那时候通信是不是有字数的限制？有有有有，跟有有打仗的国家都是二十五个字啊什么的。那您当时这二十五个字怎么样准确表达意思啊？您记得怎么通信的吗？那你可以多写几幅啊，啊<笑>是不是？您记得这二十五个字写的信有没有这个印象比较深的信？嗯嗯，没有。祝你好不好？祝你好不好？就是够了，二十五个字，我挺好啊，你放心好了，是就是这样。Towards the end of the war, in early 1945, Qian Sanqiang and Hu Zihui expressed in the letters their feelings for each other. After sending each letter, they would eagerly wait for the Red Cross messenger to appear. Each message carrying the scent of battle. 呃，然后呢？经过这些通信呢，他们逐步逐步的呃恢复起来，就是因为他们过去呃同同窗过四年，就双方有有有有很多了解，已经有了解，再加上这这二十五字之间的交流呢，使他们逐步逐步的呃走到一起，然后感情受到得到升华。Far away from home and family, the good memories of schoolmate friendship. Let the flower of love bloom in their hearts. Although 25 words were very short, their love for each other was unstoppably growing between the lines of their letters. Bye. 
来吧，护士来吧，护士子来吧，护士来吧，护士子来吧，护士子，快来吧，护士。In spring 1946, when the smoke of World War II gradually dispersed, He Zhihui came to Paris, where these wartime lovers finally got their wish to embrace happiness. Even the usually reclusive couple Juliet Curie attended their wedding and extended their best wishes to these promising young Chinese. After their wedding. Qin Sunjiang and He Zhihui took up work together at the Curie Lab and discovered ternary and quaternary fissions of heavy nuclei. They received the attention of the Western nuclear physics circles and became known as the Curies of China. However, they live in a materially poor life, often short of food. That's when Sister He Yijin in faraway America had to send food and clothes parcels through the Red Cross to her sister who had just become a mother. When the war was over, He Yijin and her husband Gu Tingsui carried on their scientific research in the United States. Gu Tingsui had left the radiation lab of Massachusetts Institute of Technology and engaged in the theoretical research on the internal friction in metals at the Institute of Metal Research in Chicago. In that period, he invented the famous Coos Pendulum and discovered Coos Peak. After which, he became a renowned expert in the field of internal friction in metals. After the war, communication gradually returned to normal, and the 25 wars had become history. Yet for the Hu sisters, it was still a question when they would be able to return to their homeland and be reunited with their loved ones. They felt very homesick. In May 1948, Qin Sanjiang and his wife He Zhihui, carrying their six-month-old daughter Qin Zuxuan, set out on their journey home, carrying the hope of the Chinese that science would save their country. On the ship back home, they remember the Juliet Curie couple bidding them farewell, and whose parting advice still echoed in their ears: "Serve science." But science must serve the people. In November 1949, He Yijian, her husband Gu Tingsui, and their two children embarked on their journey home across the Pacific, where the call of the motherland was awaiting them. The dream of national revival and a prosperous country rose in their hearts. In 1949, the Chinese Communist Party was formed. Then, our family, our four children, were on a boat to cross the Atlantic and then to the Pacific Ocean. They came to Hong Kong first, and then to Hong Kong. 搁香港再换船，换比较小一个船，呃，当时好像是到天津，啊，然后我们再到北京。呃，在香港的时候呢，呃，我我当时给我的朋友写了一封信，是这样一封信
，这个是这个信封，这个信呢，嗯、呃，这上面写的，这信封都写的，就是那个我们回来的那个轮船啊，这个轮船的专用的那个信纸和信封，啊，嗯、呃，当时我写这个信呢，就说啊，我们要呃回家了，我要看到我姥姥了，我当时就是特别兴奋。但是当时这个信呢，没有寄出去，所以就是我妈妈一直就是留着，在这个信的后边，我还画的画，一个是火车，这是在国内，在美国的国内，呃，我们从芝加哥呀、啊、到西海岸是坐火车，然后这上头画的是一个大轮船，这船上还写的这是什么什么总统号啊，呃，还挺像的。我妈妈，她和他们兄弟姐妹，和他们的父母，关系都非常和睦。呃，他们留下了大量的信件和照片。但是呢，呃，虽然他们都是很喜欢照相，而且有很多的照片，但是当我们呃看他留下来的大量的照片这里头，我们看没有一张呢。他们全家的合影，甚至没有呢。他们八个兄弟姐妹的合影。那么这个呢，一方面是因为我母亲比她最小的弟弟大十六岁，有些照片呢，就是人当然不全了。而后来呢，我妈二十一岁就出国了，以后相继呢，她弟弟、妹妹也都是出国。她回来的时候呢，她她妹妹又出国了，不在。所以呢，就是他们家呢，始终就是，呃，没有团聚，一直到解放前，呃，我妈妈，呃，她的妹妹、弟弟分别都从国外回来了，但是呢，他们的父母呢又都去世了，所以呢，就是始终也没有留下一个全家合影。我妈妈在一九四一年第二次出国的时候，她是看到呢，就是，呃，国土沦亡，在国家内部呢，呃，有无所作为嘛，所以呢，就再次呢出国留学。但是她没有想到，她这一去呢，就是再也没看到。在我们回国的途中，我外婆呢不幸去世了，这是我妈妈和我终身的遗憾。因为在我妈妈回国，她就惦的要早一天看到她妈妈，而且几十年以后，她还跟我说：“我怎么不想我妈妈？我没有一天不想。”The Hu family's eight children all became scholars in natural science. Hu Yijin, one of China's first generation of female doctors of physics, studied and worked in the United States for 14 years. When she returned, Hu Yijin became New China's pioneer in spectroscopy and developed amorphous physics and metallic glass research. Hu Yijin retired at the age of 85. And passed away on July 30, 2008, in Shenyang, at the age of 98. He Yijin's husband Gu Tingzui continued to lead the world's advanced research in the field of internal friction in metals, and later became an academician of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. In 1999, he received the world's highest award in material science, the Mail Award. In April 2000, Gu Tingzui passed away in Hefei at the age of 87. Hu Zeming graduated from Kyoto Imperial University in the 1940s. 
After returning to China, he worked as an engineer at the Central Machinery Plant in Kunming. Later, he became professor at the Beijing Steel and Iron Institute and vice principal of North China University of Technology. He Zihui, Chinese Academy of Sciences, researcher at the Institute of High Energy Physics. On March 5, 2011, she celebrated her 97th birthday. On June 28, 1992, Qian Sunqiang, Chinese Academy of Sciences, founder of China's nuclear energy research and famous nuclear physicist, passed away in Beijing at the age of 79. He Zuyong studied in Japan in the 1930s and 40s. In 1944, he returned to China and taught at the Shanxi Women's Medical School. After New China was founded, he served as a professor at Shanxi Medical University and became a famous cytologist. During the war years, He Ying studied on and off at university. After being accepted at Taiwan University, she decided to leave Taiwan in order to return to New China and boarded the last ship heading for the mainland. Later, she did planned research at the Nanjing Botanical Garden. He Zuyuan graduated from Suzhou Industrial College. He Zucheng graduated from North China University of Technology, geological instrument expert. The youngest of the eight siblings, He Zuqing, entered Tsinghua University in 1944 to study physics. Later, he became lecturer at Changchun College of Geology and died young in 1976. He Cheng's dream as a father was that of building a strong nation after his poor and weak people had gone through a period of backwardness and bullying. The dream of saving his country through science finally came true through his eight children. These children, along with millions of other talented Chinese scholars, experienced the brutality of war and great mental suffering. Yet, they made tremendous contributions to their country and for civilization and progress of humanity. This family paid the price of long separation to help build a strong nation. 25 wars was all they could anxiously wait for. And when the war ended, they had forever lost the chance to reunite. 25 wars, a Chinese family's memory of war, but also the collective memory of an era.